Welcome back to Creatively Crafted Life. This is Melanie and today I am bringing you a watercolor done the art impressions way and this is actually using their line of stamps that are intended to um, have the look of watercolor when you're completed. I'm just using some Canson watercolor and I store all of my stamps um, belonging to this collection in one of these binder cases. Because they all work together um, I found it easier to sort them by type and intermix the different sets. So that's what you uh, what you see here. Um, I'm actually going to do the project that they give with the stamp set with the mailboxes. And so I just pulled out all the images that I'm going to need and um, I'm just putting them on some clear blocks so I'm ready to go ahead and stamp. Now, if you look really closely, the large image that I picked <laughs> was actually birdhouses and not the mailbox. So you'll see me switch that out here shortly. I'm going to be using my Stampin' Up! Uh, markers um, to do this. I believe Art Impressions uses Marvy, I think, um, but really any water-based marker will, will work. And I'm just going through here the different colors. So chocolate chip, not quite navy. I think that was Daffodil Delight. Um, Cajun Craze, real red, bordering blue. Yeah, I can't remember. You'll have to pause and look at those. A couple different pinks. Uh, garden green and wild wasabi. So those are the different markers I intend to use for the image with the chocolate chip and just use that to outline the main image of the mailboxes. Now if I were to go back and do this again I think I would choose a lighter brown like maybe a soft suede or something where I think just would have worked a little better to make the um, especially the wood base look a little less dark. So I just colored it with the brush tip of the marker and then just gave it a little bit of a huff and then stamped that on the watercolor paper. Now I'm using a number six brush here that I picked up from Walmart and I'm, you'll see that I'm wringing it out because you want very, very, very little water. And in fact, I probably still had too much water on here. <laughs> um, it would also be good to have like a paper towel or what I pull out later is a microfiber cloth that I just used to kind of um, mop up even more of that water. If you do find that you have um, too much water on there and the co color starts to puddle, you know, again, use the paper towel or a microfiber cloth to um, mop that up. So this is definitely a little darker than the image um, that came with the stamps, but again, this is my interpretation <laughs> and I'm not using the exact same color, so that's okay. And um, I'm okay with that. So the basic technique from what I can tell with art impressions is that you're just lightly going over um, many of the lines just to kind of watercolor them out so make them not quite so crisp. Um, but you don't want to totally distort. So just very light hand is, um, is what I'm applying here. And like I said, the brown did, did move pretty, pretty easily. So I'm using some, I think this is Molotow uh, masking fluid. And I didn't know if you were supposed to shake it before you used it. So I did shake it quite a bit and it ended up causing bubbles. So I'm thinking that you probably shouldn't be shaking it. <laughs> um, so anyways, what I'm doing here is I am masking out where the flowers are gonna go. Um, so we're gonna leave them white. Um, and then we'll add the color afterwards. So this just allows you to do that background wash of leaves or greenery without having to worry about um, how or where we're gonna position the flowers after the fact. Um, once I kind of got the initial bubbles out, the rest of it dotted in pretty quick, pretty quickly. And it's completely random and um, you don't need a lot. Uh, once this is done, you do need to let this dry and it does take a while to dry. <laughs> so we, zoom through time here and it's much much later and um, now what we're going to do is we're just going to apply a little bit of the green marker this is the wild wasabi on top of acrylic block or if you had like a um, an acetate sheet or um, a craft mat and we're just creating a wash of color to kind of you know give the illusion of bushes or um, plants in the background so really we're not going for any detail here it's just a general overall shape and you want to use a fair amount of color, um, not color, fair amount of water because you don't want anything, you know, too, too terribly dark, right? Because this is going to be in the background. And so you, uh, backgrounds images tend to look lighter. So 
I'm just doing this very sloppily, not, not too careful. You can see here I've just got this kind of um, outline going on. And at this point, it kind of looks like a heart to me. And I was thinking, oh, you know what? Mother's Day, Mother's Day is coming up. And uh, maybe I can make this into a Mother's Day card. So we're going to take one of the vine images. Um, this is the one I believe that came. I don't know which set this came from, to be honest. I don't remember. <laughs> um, but what you're doing is you're just marking up bits and pieces of the stamp, and you're just stamping that around um, around the mailboxes and maybe even overlapping the them a little bit. The stamp set with the post, post office boxes or the mailboxes um, all comes with a small vine, and so we're doing the same thing there is just filling in some of the blanks. Then what you want to do is you want to take again a very, very, very almost dry damp brush and all you're doing is you're kind of dabbing on the images that you just stamped. That's the best way I can describe it. Um, Bonnie Krebs, who's the owner of Art Impressions, she's got a ton of videos and can go into her technique a little bit more, but um, I just zoomed in here so you can see what I'm doing, um, which is I think what she does um, but basically you're just kind of dabbing on the image just to blur it out just a little bit you don't want to lose all the definition but just you know enough to make it look like a watercolor now as I said before the brown is very dark and it will tend to run a little bit and that's okay um, you know there's brown in bushes and stuff too with the branches so um, not a big deal and then I decided that I wanted to have a few more um, vines going in there so I just quickly added that's the great thing is you can always play with this and uh, change it as you go along see I'm just adding a little bit more I wanted to have some come up over in front of the um, the mailboxes and again I got a little bit too much water on there and I just dabbed it away with the microfiber cloth very easy and that's what it's looking like at this point now I am taking um, some other colors from my selection there to paint in the mailboxes. This is real red and it does get muddied a little bit. In other words, it's not a bright cheery red because of the brown outline and I'm okay with that. It does give it a muted look. Um, the other thing with watercolor that I have learned and I'm not an expert at it by any stretch of the imagination, but you don't want to color like you color with markers. So you want to leave white gaps and you want to leave um, What's the right word? It looks better if it's not completely smooth, if that makes sense. So some different tones or darks and lights um, make it look way more interesting. So white is your friend and the less precise, the better it looks. I know that sounds really strange, but if you color in like you color with a marker, it just ends up looking really flat. So I just took some of the um, yellow, filled in the other mailbox, and now we're taking some of the bordering blue and we're just gonna paint these um, other ones here on this side of the red and the yellow one. And again, just very sloppily adding the color, um, not being too precise. I do want a little bit of shading here and there, but to be honest, I did not pay attention to a light source. I was just kind of going off the image that came on the project sheet and that's about all I was doing. <laughs> so we're gonna add a little bit of the blue down into the post as well, just to give it a little bit of shading, because um, again, shadows kind of have that bluey gray, um, gray look to them. And I do a lot of fiddling here and there. Um, again, as you run out of color on your block or your mat, you just can add some more directly from the pen, and then you just keep applying different layers until you're happy with it. Now, that's true of any watercolor, right? Um, watercoloring is all about building, building layers on top of each other. So there's a little hummingbird that comes with the stamp set, and so I just stamped him in brown as well. I took a little bit of red and a little bit of the Cajun craze and just filled in um, you know, his neck area and some parts of his wings, but I did not color him in completely. I also didn't really go really close to the edge of him because he's so tiny, I really didn't want to lose a lot of the details. So we're just going back in again, darkening up the red a little bit. And then I'm going to take the marker and I'm just going to, you know, add the dot for his eye. There was a dot that was stamped, but again, with all the stuff that I was doing on there, um, the definition of it was gone. So I thought we'll just add it back in. 
You saw me use my heat gun. Again, that was just to speed up the process. With watercolors, you wanna do multiple layers and you do want it to dry in between. Now, I'm using ink, I'm not using real watercolors. <laughs> so I think these tend to be a little more reactive maybe than watercolors. I guess it depends on the brand. But um, having it dry helps a lot to layer, you know, to add different layers. And you can see here now where I'm getting a little bit more depth of color, which is what I was going for. Just a lot of playing around, adding some little shadows, but not spending too much time on it. Although <laughs> when I'm editing the video, it sure feels like I spent a lot of time on it. I was looking here going, Mel, what the heck are you doing? Just adding a little bit here and there, but it must have made sense at the time. Again, just um, don't worry too much if some of the brown brown moves around. It just is going to add a little bit of depth to the image. I'm just drawing in the name plates or the numbers for the two that didn't have any. Now here comes the fun part. Um, we're actually going to remove the masking fluid. So all you need with this particular brand is just your fingers. And it just rubbed off very easily and very cleanly. And now you can see those white spots that were left over from, um, from where we had the masking fluid. So I'm just taking the lighter pink and I'm just gonna fill in. And again, it's kind of like a dotty, dabby motion. I don't want to fill in the white completely. I wanna leave a little bit of white in there. I'm also going back over top of them. Um, again, not the entire image, just bits and pieces of it. So it kind of looks like petals, very loosely, um, at least to my, <laughs> to my, um, to my eyes and then I'm just taking the darker pink and I'm just going in and putting a small dot in each of the flowers to represent the centers and then again just dabbing on it with a very damp like very almost dry damp paintbrush and that fills that in so now it's just a matter of putting the card together so I just have um, a white card base that I'm going to use it's roughly four and a quarter by five and a half it's actually a little bit short I think it's probably five and a quarter and that was probably because when I made them I made a mistake or I made them from scrap I am taking this die from Little Inker it's a stitched rectangle die I believe Lawn Fawn has some so does Simon Says Stamp any of those would work you just want to find one that's going to fit your image I ran that through the machine and I did use a little bit of washi tape to hold it in place because my plates are a little bit warped and I wanted to make sure this didn't shift as it was going through. I also selected from my scraps some of this yellow, I believe it's Daffodil Delight from Simon, not Simon, from Stampin' Up. And we're just gonna adhere that to the card base. And you'll see here that it's slightly longer than the card base, which leads me to believe the card base is a little less than five and a half inches wide and that's okay no no harm no foul right so i'm just going to trim that off and then i'm going to take some foam tape and apply that to the back of this image the card is, itself is pretty simple um, it's a very basic design but i think the foam tape helps elevate it a little bit and um, really what i want the focus to be is on the painting i don't think it needs much else we put a little bit of effort into it so, so we might as well let it shine and i'm just going to center that on the card base and give that a good press and that pretty much wraps up that and this is when I decided, yep, I'm going to make this into a Mother's Day card. So I pulled a stamp set from the Stampin' Up. And <clears throat> I'm going to use my Misty to help position this. It is a um, red rubber cling stamp. So um, it does take a little bit more effort to align this properly. And um, because it is red rubber, you need to remove the insert from your Misty, which I almost always forget until I'm about to do it. <laughs> so that's what you saw me there. And again, rather than pull out an ink pad, I just used the um, chocolate chip marker. I figured that was easy enough to do. And we're just going to give that a good press. And it turned out okay. Um, so that's pretty much it. So we're going to clean everything up and put things away. And that is the card. I'm so glad that you were able to join me today. Thank you so much for watching. And please like, subscribe, leave a comment if you enjoyed this video. And until next time, happy crafting.